Hi everyone, so welcome back to Daily Web Coding. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how I built this blog post right here. Uh, and we're going to talk about the tech stacks, about the data flow, about the deployment, about styling, how I'm using it. And also there's a written version as well, you can see right here. And also the demo, you can go into the link in the description to this post, uh, to this post right here. So overall, this blog post is really simple. It just have like the homepage right here that lists all the blog posts. And there's an about page that talk mainly <laughs> about me. And also we can click on in the each individual post. We can see the post detail of it. And also um, on top of that, I have built my own editor right here as an admin. So I can create a new post, update or delete a new one. And also this one right here is going to be revalidated. So I'm going to talk more what is that. And this uh, when we talk about the data flow, and here there's another page that we can be able to post and create a new post right here. So basically this is a pretty simple blog post, uh, but uh, some technical behind it, uh, how I use it. Uh, all of this is statics and it's also update on the fly, but we're going to talk about how to update the statics data as well. All right, so um, let's get started. All right, so we're going to start off with the tech stacks. So for the text that I'm using is I'm using Next.js. So why I'm using Next.js because uh, Next.js has a lot of feature to offer to force and it's really good for productions. Uh, and be, and one of the feature from Next.js is called uh, SSG, static size generations. Um, that's suitable for this kind of uh, blog post because most of the content right here is um, going to be static. It's not, it's the updates uh, for it, it's going to rarely update. So as you can see, I have created since July 25, but I haven't updated since then. So the data mostly is going to be statics and we don't really have to change it. And that's why Next.js um, uh, statics uh, generation is really good and fits for this uh, type of apps. And for styling, we're going to use the Tailwind CSS. And the reason I use, I like Tailwind because uh, it's allowed me to write a CSS in the class names itself. So I don't have to think about the class names. And the other thing is like um, the ship CSS to production, it's eliminate the unused CSS for us. And it's make, it's really lightweight. And yep, let's do it automatically, which is, I really like it so much. And so the other thing is for data store, I'm using Firebase. So when I start doing this one, I was thinking about, okay, should I um, store, create a file of each blog post and I'm going to read it uh, when, read it for like an absolute pass of the file. Um, but the reason, but to do that, I don't really like that. So because I wanted to update on the fly of the data and I want to build my own admin page and manage those blog posts. So that's why I choose Firebase. And because there's a free tier, it's really good for test out some idea. I really like it. So I use the Firebase. And for it's also including authentication as well. Come out of the box. So it's great. I like it and I use it. <laughs> and for the language, yeah, using TypeScript because the reason it's going to eliminate some of the silly error that we encounter, like um, this property is not belong to this, something like that. So it reduce a lot of um, error and yeah, it's good for productions. So yep. So overall, this is a text uh, tech stacks. Uh, and so we're going to talk more about data flow, how I'm update the SSG. So if you, if we, if someone has never know about the SSG, how it's worth doing behind the scene is that uh, static size generation. So it's mean whenever the page is built. So the data is happening at build times only. So we're going to talk more about it uh, when we're going to talk about data flow. All right. So right now we're going to talk about the data flow of our blog post. So as you can see right here, I, ch I choose this three uh, page to explain. And also this is a Firebase. And currently right now, for example, right here, we have the five post uh, data inside our uh, Firebase. All right, so let's first talk about the uh, data uh, page, how it's get the data, how it can, yeah, how it can get the data. So as you can see right here, this is the data page. So as you can see here, so with the data uh, as an admin, I want to see the fresh data. I want to see data every time that I open this page. So for this one, I'm using the uh, client side renderings uh, for this one. So let us actually do, I'm going to choose the white color right here. So for this one, it's the data. So I want a really fresh 
data. So what we're going to do is like using use effects uh, and something like that. So when the user go into this page, we going to fetch the data. So this one is going to be a client size, um, client site. All right. So, yep, that is a really simple um, for this one. So next is we're going to talk about the home page. So how to get the data. So for the home page, uh, this one is um, is using the uh, it's, it is statics. So it's uh, it's using the functions. So I'm going to copy this one. So it's using the function get uh, statics props. So um, uh, from Next.js. So what this function will do when we using this function Next.js will know that okay we want to have this page as statics. So with this functions, it's going to make requests to the Firebase and it gets the data. And once it that, it's gonna make it as a cache in for, for this page. So let's say right here. Um, after we get that, so we get the five posts uh, into this one. So everything has happened right here. It happens, uh, the data fetching and everything's right here. It's happened at um, build times only. At build time. So this one right here. So when we build this page, uh, it, it uses function. This function will get the data, uh, five, uh, the data right here. It's returned for this page and it's stored a cache. So for example, what happened when a user is going to visit this page right here, uh, let's say the user is this is uh, the user. I'm gonna draw me as a user right here. It's going to fetch this post. So it is not going to go here. It just grab this post that we have cache and return back to the user. So as you can see, because we build it as a statics. So what statics do is not going to make the request to the Firebase. So there you go. So that's how the user get this data, and it is how the statics page works. And it is uh, similar things for the uh, the page this right here. This one is just the dynamic page. So this page, uh, when you click on one of the page, so you can see this is the, the, the slash ID right here. And it's using uh, the same functions, basically to get the statics props. But this one, uh, get static prop right here, will fetch only one post. And then the other function that we are using, let's, uh, is it gonna be get uh, static pass. So, and everything is happening at build time as well. So what get static pass will do, it's gonna generate as a uh, multiple pass that we want a static. So let's say you have five posts and you want to build those five individual posts and like uh, each uh, detail or post detail page uh, at build time as well. So we, we uh, you can fetch uh, this one. So what it does at build time, it's gonna generate us this uh, much uh, static post right here. So you can see. So uh, based upon uh, how much pass that you call to the get the data from this pass right here, it will um, get uh, the page right here. So let, let's say, for example, you get the static pass for one uh, data only or one post only. So to get the, the generate page for the dynamic page, it's just only one page. Okay. Um, so what this one will do is exactly the same things. So that the user as a user is going to behave the same thing since it's already cache, it's built at build time. We have the data at the same thing here. Um, so if the user come into this one, it's get the data and it was returned back to the user with the cache that we already built for the user. So it doesn't have to fetch the data. That is really nice and it's really fast because, uh, and the SEO is really great. And, uh, since the was sales or any other platform host like Netlify, um, or Google cloud, like they have like the C global CDNs, it's cached there. So the user can just go there and get the data really quick and the loadings. It's really fast. So um, the initial load is really fast. So this is how the, um, statics of data flow works with the SSG. But the problem right now is that, so let's say what happened if I add the new data into here. So when I add the new data here, it's, uh, it's going to update to this one. And then this one is going to becomes uh, the six post, right? So, so this, um, so once again, this happened as client side. So whenever I update here, uh, it's going to update and it's make request update to Firebase. But the problem right now is like this five post right here is still there. So uh, one way uh, to do this is you have to rebuild the entire thigh again, but 
But this one is not, it's, we're not changing any code, right? We're just adding the data. It's happened on the fly user already. Uh, we already host this one. So we're not going to do rebuild our apps. Uh, so to so how do we gonna so then how are we gonna update our post? So with the Next.js, um, we there's two ways that you can do this. One is gonna be like an on-demand ISO, and the other thing is gonna be um, an ISO incremental right here. So you can hop in using the revalidation. So for this one, it's gonna be every 10 seconds. So what does it what it mean like for every 10 seconds? Each uh, this two page right here, or whatever, uh, yeah, whatever the page that you use the get static prop. So it can see whenever you use function, you can pass the revalidate here. Wherever you use this function, if you pass this one, so it's mean that it's going to fetch the data every ten minute, every ten seconds. So that's uh, this what this do, okay? But we don't want that, right? So it's good, um, but it's good, but it's not in right for our case because, as you can see, our data is not. We don't. Well, it's not been updated for almost um, a weeks or two weeks or even months already. So I don't want to uh, do the um, interval like waiting for this amount of time and then we're gonna revalidate. That's not great, and I don't want that. Um, so with Next.js, a new version, you can do the on-demand ISO. So what this on-demand will do is it's happening like this. So let's say when I post a new post right here and it's become six posts. So also, and after that, if it's successfully, and I'm going to let this one, so I'm going to do this one, change the color. So this post right here is going to be called one of the one of the routes that I'm going I'm create the API routes in the uh, Next.js is going to be revalidate. It's going to call this one, and then it's going to pass the payload uh, for me that I wanted to use. Um, so for now, I'm going to do this one. So it's going to be like an array of paths that I wanted to update, and I'll let's say slash the ID right here. Well, so this one I should be uh okay this one so right here i pass the payload to this one let's say uh, once again when i post here i send the data uh, update here and then i call this route right here with the pass that i want to hey uh hey revalidate uh this pass right here need to revalidate can you go there and revalidate so what this will do it's uh this revalidate right here will trigger to each this post right here hey uh, right now, the, your data is invalid um, because there's new change and something like that. I want you to make an update. So when this trigger here, it may request to the API and it sends the six posts to this one. Uh, it's going to be this one. It's going to be six posts. Okay, so you can see that that's what is happening. And it's also happened for this one as well, because let's say if you send uh, this slash here with the ID that match whatever dynamic page that we have here, it also do exactly the same thing. For one times only, uh, for that the moment that we do this, and for the next time, when after this one has been updated, the user uh, is coming in, the request, it send it from here again. So you can see our data is uh, that's how we update the static data thanks to the on-demand ISO and uh, here's the code of the revalidation so you can see so we create the API revalidate right here uh, we protect it with the secrets that we have so because we don't want anyone to just to revalidate this API and then uh, right here we have um, as a string so you can see like the body of the multiple paths that you user want to update and then we promise all of that and yeah, so this is the function that's called to that API. Pretty simple, just a simple uh, fetch with the post method. Okay, so I guess that pretty much it on how to the update the, the static side. And it's really good to use with Firebase. The reason is that if you know with Firebase is we, it costs depend on how much we read the data. So by doing this, our data is not being read so much. Just we read only when we, as an admin, when we edit or want to post something new. Um, but as a user, they just read it from the cache that already built. Um, that's really nice and saves us a lot of uh, money from Firebase as well. So, yep.
uh, that is all so let's talk about the deployment so where can we deploy this and that support all everything all the feature i have tried with nellify and um, so there's a top provider it's gonna be like a net uh lify and also uh and but with nellify it's not working for me guys um so i hope that nellify uh, will will support this one but for now it is not support so the, the platform that actually supports uh everything that i just said is with cell it is really nice and uh, with cell is um you can use it uh, it's really fast to deploy this pipeline build in force for your githubs and everything is really fast and support everything that Next.js um, uh, support because, well, Next.js was built by Rosell teams. So anyway, you uh, uh, you should uh, use it. And uh, yeah, uh, the on-demand ISO are here. I think only Rosell support, but the other thing, the other platform can use it as well, like Nellify here. So yeah, so I think that is all for on how to build this one. And the data flow and the deployment so let's let actually show you the demo of uh that i talk about the revalidation right here so from here i think i can i should move myself up a little bit because there was some loading inside this uh bottom right here right now you can see uh, this one has happened at client side and as you can see we have uh this one right here there's no space at the at the end or i'm gonna update this one I'm gonna update this one with the call demo I update so you can see it's updated post and it's all do revalidating the cache so once the everything is finished it's going to um, revalidate or sends me to here so right now it's successfully updated the cache sends me here you can see we have this demo and if I go back in here it's not per being uh, updated yet so if I refresh so you can see it's almost an instant so it's updates for this one as well and once again this is static so right now when i come back here i don't really have to uh, fetch the data it's already cached there and yeah so right now everything here i am going to do it again remove it back and i'm going to update this again so yeah that pretty much it on how we uh how I build this one, the data flow and everything. Once again, you can see this is feel like um, an instance update. All right, so I think that pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you learned something. If And if you want me to build this one as a tutorial, please let me know in the comment as well. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and yep, see you guys in the next video. Peace.